you know, it could be the same thing, right? Absolutely. There was a, in fact, that's up on Infowars.com today. I haven't even covered that, uh, where they staged a terror attack and then just said it was a drill. Was that an operation where the police got caught and then a huge explosion, areas destroyed, is just turned into no big deal? In fact, I'm going to print that right now. Go ahead. Tell folks about that. Well, all I know is um, what I saw on your website, but, I mean, it was extremely suspicious. It reminded me, of course, of uh, 9-0-7, of 7-7, of the fact that they run these drills as cover in case something goes wrong. They can say, oh, it was a drill. Never mind. Don't worry about it. It's amazing. Uh Let's speak about government-sponsored terrorism first and Montreal 9-11 Truth and, and more of how uh, you guys are going out and, and, and bringing up these key issues and how preemptively talking about how they may be planning to stage terror can preempt their activities in a devastating fashion. You also see how serious the government was uh, taking what you were what you were just now saying. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go through that and then into the public Bilderberg Group event happening as they take over your government, openly announcing world government uh, in Canada. Yeah, well, um, I have to say that actually uh, I wouldn't have even have been aware of uh, the company being given the contract for the, uh, for the security cameras in our subway if it weren't for the work of uh, some other members of Montreal uh, 9-11 Truth who came along first and did the research and found out about it. And um, when I when I found out, I mean, it just it didn't pass the stink test. This company had been given the the right to uh, do the uh, security cameras in the London Underground right before seven seven, which I mean, we all remember, of course, were the same cameras that you know didn't work that day on uh, seven seven. Um, it has uh, it's a company that's owned by a uh, former Mossad uh, official. Um, He's now uh, fighting extradition from, I think it's like Liberia or, or some uh, African country that doesn't have extradition treaties uh, because he's, he's being brought up on, on fraud charges. And his guy is, is a piece of work. And, uh, and he gave his company the, uh, the contract for, uh, for our subway system here in Montreal after it didn't function in, uh, in the, um, the London bombings on 7-7. I mean, come on. So uh, when I heard that, I had to go down and at least um, videotape my confrontation with uh, the city hall and put it up on YouTube so that if there was ever uh, something that would happen in Montreal, we could at least point to that in the past and say, look, you know, some people were warning about this uh, before it happened. Well, absolutely. And it's important to add here that it came out in the news on the day of 7-7 that Benjamin Netanyahu was warned by the head of the Mossad and because he, he gave a press conference. And he was in 7-7 that day, just a few hundred yards away from the first train bombing, to, quote, not take the subway uh, because of dangers in the subway that day. And then, even though that was in Haaretz and Jerusalem Post and AP and uh, was all over the news, then they came out in the news and denied it and said it was all a conspiracy theory and then a week later, the head of Mossad came out again and said, no, we did warn him. Mean, we knew this was going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, what's his name, Peter Power? And the yes, Visor Consultants. Just happened to be running drills at the same locations at the same time on the same day. I mean, well, that's just conspiracy theory, right? I mean, anybody who's got a little common sense knows that the conspiracy theory is just trying to display this masking these conspiracies. But anybody with, with a modicum of common sense is going to see these are very important questions. Like how could he, how could it have been scheduled at the same subway stations on 7-7 at the same time on the same day? I mean, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's just common sense. Well, it certainly is. Uh, you've been out on the ground the last few days. This thing is going through the 8th to the 11th. Let's now get into the main uh, story today, the main event, as they say. Uh, for those that just tuned in, describe what's happening in Montreal, who's meeting, the name of the conference, the sub-conferences within it, calling openly for world government. Yeah, so it's the International Economic Forum of the Americas, which takes place every year. Uh, it's the Conference of Montreal. It takes place every year. This is the 15th anniversary. And this year's uh, conference is entitled Adapting to a New World Order. Like you said, it's taking place uh, Monday to uh, Thursday, the 8th to the 11th. Yesterday had um, an opening uh, plenary session at 8.30 in the morning with the head of the IMF, and that one was titled Towards a New Global Economic 
order. There's also um, other um, forums and luncheons yesterday with the titles like A New World Governance and Thriving in a New Financial Order. Today, uh, the topic is energy, health, and there's a lot of focus on uh, genomics with genome research, genetic uh, research. Uh, today, uh, there's even a plenary session given by the UN, uh, UNESCO, which is part of the UN, uh, entitled Genomics Towards a Revolution. And then tomorrow, there's a big thing watching out for. There's a luncheon at noon tomorrow entitled The Americas and the New World Order, and that's being chaired by Madeleine Albright. Actually. And um, I, when I was speaking to a reporter yesterday who was inside here covering it, we asked him about the North American Union and whether there was any of the North American Union. And he said, Stay no. there. I want to hear the answer to this when we get back. Uh, with our guest covering what's happening up there in Montreal right now, Sam Labrier. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Sam Labrier is our guest. The article is up on Infowars.com. This morning I was reading email and I was sent an email. It's here in my stack. I forgot to dig it out during the break because I was doing a quick four minute interview on 93.7 here in town with Charlie Hodge great guy and I printed off the uh, here it is the Obama deception movie moon battery at its finest and I was reading the guy's article attacking the Obama deception and then I was reading his comments under him when people were countering him going because in his article he says there's no global government there's no such thing as a new world order none of this exists and then and then people are commenting going no there is a Bilderberg group there is a New World Order, and he says, yeah, there's a Bilderberg group, but Alex Jones is just reaching and connecting dots that aren't there and saying they want world government. He doesn't know what they're saying in secret, and he goes, yeah, it, it might look suspicious to you know a moon bat that world elites are meeting secretly, but he doesn't know what they're saying. Uh, no, and if you did a review of the Obama deception, you knew that. We show mainstream articles. Bilderberg Group has now gone public saying they're setting up a, quote, New World Order. They give interviews to Time Magazine, Newsweek, Financial Times of London. And they say, we're going to have a tyrannical, authoritarian, they use the term authoritarian, world government. And we built it in secret because you wouldn't want it. We know what's best for you. And it's going to save you from the economic collapse, which they engineered, doesn't mention that, and a new carbon tax to regulate and control every facet of your life. So it doesn't matter when they're in hundreds of mainstream news articles I've seen. We probably put 15 Time Magazine, Newsweek, Financial Times of London articles with them saying it, blowing up the text with Etienne Davignon, the head of the Bilderberg Group, saying it. And what do I get? I get to be called a kook. Because I know they're taking over our society. Now, is this guy an operative or is he just a wannabe? Uh, probably a wannabe. Thinks he's part of the system. Thinks he has personal power. Thinks by accepting the power elite and making excuses that he's part of it. You know, conscious, unconsciously climbing the ladder. A lot of people are like that. They'll do anything to climb the ladder. Even if the ladder leads them downward into hell. Like this guy says, it seems like some of you posting have no idea about Alex Jones and what he said, predicted. Some of you are awake, but the guy with the picture of him, that's the writer, is some douchebag corporate uniform. You need to wake up and realize that that material stuff you love means nothing to bettering you as a person. And it goes on. And then the the uh, writer goes on. I'm trying to find I should have highlighted it. I just printed it. He goes on to say... Uh, He goes on to say that, um, oh, well, I know it looks suspicious. I'll find it during the break. I don't want to make our guests sit there on hold while I'm babbling going over this. He, he goes on to show the double thing that, that, that we're making up. You know, they're having this Bilderberg Group subconference steering group meeting in Canada. They, they said they're setting up a North American union and, and a global governance publicly with their own press releases. And this guy says, nope, doesn't exist. Uh, sir, continue. Sam, continue. Alex, don't get uh, discouraged by the uh, the naysayers and the people who call you names. They're only doing that because you're actually having an effect, and they're actually scared of you. So uh, don't ever. No, but listen, that. Sam, Sam Labrera, I, you know I know that, 
But, but the issue is, I don't think this guy, I think this guy really thinks we're making up that Bilderberg wants 